In this tutorial, I'll walk you through integrating checkout into your PHP website. Um, this is the easiest way to accept payments on Stripe. Um, we are going to embed this uh, HTML right here. And then after we've done that, we're going to do a little bit of uh, server-side processing um, once we get the uh, token back from Stripe in order to um, you know, finish the process of charging the card. So I'm just going to walk you through um, doing this in Laravel and we'll try to you know follow best practices along the way as well um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll just copy this right here um, I'm just doing a walkthrough here so um, I'm not actually gonna be typing any code um, we're gonna be just going through what I have so far um, you know the if you want to process credit cards with stripe the first thing we need to do is include um, stripes library stripes PHP library uh, into our site so um, I'm just going to go over to uh, stripe.com slash docs slash libraries here and you'll see there's different ways that you can include the library based on um, which language you're using. So with PHP um, there's the zip file right here so just download this zip, um, unpack it and then once you have that folder we are going to place it into Laravel. Um, in my case um, I did a little bit of research on um, the best way to go about this to be um, including this library in uh, Laravel and um, was able to find the following. So um, this worked fine for me so I'm going to recommend it to you as well. And inside your app folder you want to create a new folder called library and inside library you can just paste your whole Stripe library in there. So um, at the time of this recording, stripe-php-183, and inside that there is a lib folder, and there's a test folder, and inside the lib folder there's a file stripe.php, and um, you know this is where this is where it's going to start. It's going to be requiring all the different parts of this um, library package uh, that we need. So that's the first step. Um, create that library folder and place the stripe library inside there. And what you can do after that is edit start slash global dot php and add at path slash library to the class loader add directories array. Okay, so um, we can find that start one right here. We'll go into app and then start and then global dot php. And we'll open this up. And you can see the line I added right here. So inside class loader add directories, we add one more line which is at path slash library. Okay, once that's done, we're going to edit our composer.json file and add app slash library to the autoload array. Okay, so composer.json is in the um, root of our folder. Uh, you can find it right here. And you can see that I've added this um, right here, this fourth line, app slash library. Okay, um, finally, once that's been added, we're going to run composer dump autoload. So go over to your command line tool and um, just type ls to make sure where you are. You're going to be in. You're going to want to be in the same folder that Artisan is in. And then from here, we are going to um, type composer dump autoload. Okay, so I'm just going to type that again. I've done this already, but um, it's not going to hurt to do it again. And generating autoload files. Um, I don't think this is giving me any other information because I've done this already, um, but you you probably will get some message about um, you know what change just happened. So that's all done now. We're including um, Stripe's library now. The next thing we can do is go over to routes.php, and this is where all of the routing begins um, in Laravel. So you'll see I have um, two routes set here. One is a route uh, which is a GET request for the home page and we are just returning the checkout view right there. This is where we're going to place our form. And then we also have a post route right here. If um, at one of our pages posts to slash checkout, um, we are going to run this callback function right here. So inside this function, um, we're taking a look at the post that we received. So this input all is really the same as uh, dollar sign post, the global post array and we're putting an HR tag after that just to separate it from um, what we're going to post after that. So if we successfully uh, charge the card, um, you know, th this charge right here, 
we are going to get a large object returned to us from Stripe. And then we are going to take a look at that. So in Laravel, you can do DD on an object or an array, which is essentially um, using print R on it and then dying after that. And I think it's wrapped in pre tags as well, um, just so it's easier to see. So we are dumping and dying um, the successful charge if that was successful. Um, but if it wasn't successful, then this try is going to fail and we're going to go into our uh, catch statement right here. And then we're going to catch the error and then we're going to dump and die the error if we did get an error. So let's first go over to um, this, uh, this get route right here. This is where we're going to place our form. So I'm just going to um, open that up right here. That is um, checkout.blade.php. So in Laravel, if I just write view colon colon make checkout, um, this is going to either refer to checkout.php or we can use Laravel's um, blade templating engine and we'll just create a file um, inside the views folder called checkout.blade.php and um, we just have our, our code in here. So I've only had a couple of different things here. Um, I just commented out this test card right here. Um, this is just convenient because when we're testing, you're going to need to input this um, test credit card number a lot. Um, this card will always be successful as long as you use this number exactly and a valid expiration date and anything for the name and any three numbers for the CVV. So we are posting to slash checkout. And um, one thing that I want to mention is um, in Laravel, there is HTML helpers. Basically, there's a blade way of creating all of these form elements. Um, but because the focus of this tutorial is more on um, Stripe than it is on uh, Laravel, so I just left regular HTML. But um, you should know that Laravel has, um, it has HTML methods for, um, it has a blade way of doing all of these things, creating forms and inputs and so on. So uh, we have an embedded uh, script tag right here and we have the source where we are uh, going to, this checkout.js. And then inside data key right here, um, essentially all I'm doing right here is I'm doing a PHP echo and I'm echoing out this um, config value that I've set. Okay, so this is my um, publishable key. Um, I just want to, you know, if these curly braces look weird to you, essentially all this is, is this is PHP pseudo variables. And this is going to be the exact same thing as PHP um, echo, and then config get and so on. We're just all we're doing is echoing out the variable. Um, but we're doing it in the blade way right here. So this publishable key is not sensitive. Um, anyone could go in blue view my um, publishable key, but there's also a secret key um, with, uh, with Stripe and you don't want to let anyone see your secret key. Okay, so um, when I'm working in Laravel with Stripe, I'm going to create a config file and I'm going to place my publishable key and my secret key in there. So the publishable key will always be visible in your JavaScript, so um, there's no way you could really hide that. But your secret key is used within your um, PHP. So if I go over to where we're posting this to, uh, which is, um, let's just go over there. It's in our routes actually right now. And you'll see I, I have here config get stripe secret key. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want you to see my secret key. So I have it inside a config variable right here. And I will show you an example of how you can create this kind of um, config file inside Laravel. So um, if we go under app here, inside the config folder, you'll see I have a stripe.php which I've created and I also have a stripe example.php and um, I cannot show you my stripe.php because my secret key is in there but I can show you um, stripe example.php which is uh, basically exactly the same. So what you're going to do inside that inside your stripe.php is all you're going to do is you're going to return an array here and you're going to have your an associative array right here of your secret key and your publish and your publishable key. Once you've done this, you'll be able to access your um, config variables anywhere within your application in your views or in your controllers or wherever using config colon colon get 
and then that file name. So it was stripe.php. So I put stripe right here and then dot secret key. And then, um, for example, uh, in checkout.blade.php, we have stripe.publishable key. So that's just um, a little bit better way um, rather than hard coding uh, these keys into your code. So let's talk just a little bit more about this form right here. Um, the data amount, this is how much um, this is how much we want to charge the uh, user in cents. So I'm charging this person twenty dollars right now. And this is just some other um, this is like just some other data we're sending to Stripe um, demo site. Uh, let's not worry about let's not worry about that right now. So at the bottom here, I've just added two inputs. Um, this wasn't necessary to do this, but it's just an example. So here I'm just posting to my server in a hidden input the amount that I want to charge, which is $20. So we're going to put that in cents there. And they also have a hidden input. This is uh, so we have CSRF protection within Laravel. So um, Laravel makes it really easy to protect yourself from um, cross-site request forgery attacks. And all you have to do is create a hidden input in your form, um, which is exactly like this. And we're outputting the uh, the CSRF token um, invocation right here. And then um, after we've done that, um, we just go over to routes.php. And you'll see inside my post, um, basically I'm protecting what's inside here um, using this uh, array and then before CSRF. Okay, so we can take a look at what this is all about right here inside filters.php. Um, filters.php is at the bottom of the, it's also in the app folder. Okay, so we can take a look at that and um, it's really simple what it's doing. If that session token does not equal, or if the session token, um, the actual token does not equal the input get token, which is um, what we just posted to ourselves then we're going to throw an error. Okay, so we know that when we execute the script, if it doesn't throw this token mismatch exception error, um, we know we weren't a uh, victim of a CSRF attack. Let's go back over to our routes.php. Um, before I talk about this, I just want to mention two things about best practices. Um, one is, um, if you are really charging people's credit cards in a live environment, you definitely want to have a um, security certificate. So you should be working on HTTPS and you should have a, um, you know, a valid certificate set up on your server. And the other thing is, um, this is not the ideal way to work in Laravel. We should be, you know, if we're using a real application, we should be routing this to a controller and uh, we should be using the whole MVC, not just in our route and then going straight to the view. So. But because this is a small example, uh, we are just doing all of this logic in our route. But in a real application, you should be um, using a controller and uh, you know, and, the, and a model if necessary um, to do this kind of thing. So um, let's just go through this really quickly. The first thing we're doing is just print R um, on the post variables and just taking a look at them. Then we're doing an HR tag to separate that. Um, you can optionally do any validation you want after that, but I've chose not to in this example. Um, after that, really important, we are calling a um, static method of the Stripe class that we created, and we're passing that our Stripe secret key right here. So if we don't get an error right here, which is could not find the class Stripe, we know that the steps we took before to include our library were all successful. And I've touched this already, and um, the steps I showed you before will work just fine for including your libraries. Um, after that, we're just setting two variables, the token variable and also the amount. And after that, we are going to try to charge the card. So charge is set to stripe charge, uh, calling the static create method. And we're passing it an array of the amount, the currency, um, the card, and we're giving it the token number right there and a description. And um, you know you could also pass other things to Stripe as well, but um, this is, I think this is the minimum that you need. And um, this will get posted to Stripe and it will use it in order to uh, form its response to us. 
if this charge was not successful, we're going to go into this catch right here. And we, if there's a stripe card error exception, then we are going to dump and die that exception. Take a look at it. Um, if this was successful, we're just going to dump and die charge. Now, one thing that I want to mention about the um, try catch statement right here is there is a lot more possible um, errors that could be thrown rather than just this stripe card error. Okay, so let's just show. Uh, let's just go to their documentation really quickly, and I will show you um, something really quick here. So in stripe.com slash docs slash API errors, if you click on errors right here and you have PHP selected and you just go down here, you will see um, a big try catch right here. So um, the first error that it looks for in the first catch is stripe card error. Okay. So you can see here if it was a decline, like for example, um, insufficient funds or something, that error will be caught. And we, you can take a look at what went wrong there, okay? And then there's all these other catches. Invalid request error. Um, this error will come up from time to time, especially um, like, for example, if you have a US Stripe account and you're trying to charge a Canadian's card, this error will come up because um, it's possible in your settings you're not allowed to charge Canadians. You can only charge Americans. So this could come up. And there's also a whole bunch of other ones here. So if you're in production and you um, are really charging people's cards, you'll definitely want to implement this entire try catch statement, catching all of these different exceptions. Because if something doesn't go wrong, you're going to know um, what kind of, you're going to want to know what kind of uh, exception was thrown and then act accordingly. So I think that's all I want to talk about here. And we can go and test this out now. So I'm going to go over to um, our homepage right here, uh, which is right here, pay with card. And we are going to uh, submit this. So click pay with card. Um, for the card number, you just want to do 42 all the way, which is the test visa card. For the expiry date, just put any date in the future. For example, like 12, 2020. Name on card, I think you can just put anything there. I'll put an A. And then for CVC, you can put any three numbers. I'll put one, two, three. And let's click pay. And you can see we getting the results of um, the results of our post route right here. So the first thing that I did was I just um, remember we just took a look at the input. So you can see I posted the amount, which was 2000. And we have the underscore token right here. This is the token created by Laravel for CSRF protection. And then after that, we have the Stripe token. And this was given to us by Stripe. And the way that Stripe adds this is um, what it does is right before the form submits, it adds a hidden input to your um, form and it places the um, Stripe token in there. Okay, so after that, we can we have this object Stripe charge. And because we're seeing this here and we're not seeing, um, you know, an, an exception thrown, um, we know that this was, or we're not seeing the error object. We know that this was charged successfully now. So you can see there's a lot of things, um, you know, given back to us in Stripe's response. We have, um, we have the timestamp of when it happened. We have whether it was paid or not. So paid is true here. The amount that we charged, the currency that we charged in, um, we also have a few other things down here. We have the fee that was charged. So when we charge someone $20, um, there's going to be a fee of $0.88. Cents. And, um, you know, who was our customer? It was this paying user at example.com. This is um, what we posted to Stripe, and now it's posting it back to us. So you can take any bits of this response, and you can uh, store them in your database. You can You can have a you can have a payment records table where you're, um, you know, storing uh, different parts of this, whatever you want. And also, if we go over to the Stripe dashboard here, and I just refresh here, um, I don't know if this is going to uh, update right away, but we can, we can take a look. So um, I believe this is one that just happened. So you see, it's 511 right here, and we have um, 08. So I think this is just three minutes ago. And um, this is charges. So this is the one that we just did. And you can see this is some information that uh, Stripe received. 
And this is the response. Um, this is the response that they gave us 